welcome to Cornish Walking Trails. This is part three of our Coast to Coast, the Poldice Valley. So this is part three of our Coast to Coast Trail. The Poldice Valley is west of Redruth between Scoria and Devon. We've parked here at Wheel Unity Gates Car Park. So we've been guided today by a book called The Landful Book of the Poldice Valley, written by Bob Acton. This book was actually written in 1990, quite a long time ago. But a lot of the information is still current, or well, we hope it is, let's, let's find out if it is. And there's a lot of information about the buildings that are in this valley and the significance of it. So let's go and explore the Poldice Valley proper. Haven't really got down there yet. Look at all these buildings. Here is a rhyme about Poldice. At Poldice, the men are like mice, but tin is very plenty. Captain Teague is one of Brig, and it will give you ten for twenty. This rhyme implies that the mine had a large workforce because it was so rich in tin. Brig was the mining area near Helston where Captain Teague came from. He paid tributaries the value of ten hundredweight of white smelted tin for every twenty hundredweight of tin concentrate. Tributaries were men who were paid an agreed price for the amount of ore they brought to the surface. We've come to a load of buildings here in the Poldice Valley, so we're going to try and make sense of them. We are now looking at three and four, the arsenic works and the buddles. This building was where they crushed the ore, so when it came out of the ground it was great big lumps of rock and they needed it a bit smaller than that, so this is where they crushed the ore. So the ore's crushed and it goes out here and into a pit. Some windows down there and I reckon the ore must have gone out of there, the crushed ore. And then it would have gone into the buddles. And here in Bob Acton's book he's actually drawn it out for us. These between them are buddles. The two chambers were used together. The ore came into this one as a slime, was fed down here, brushes pushed it around. The light sand went to the edges and the metal stayed near the middle, but it wasn't fine enough yet. So they scooped it up and put it into this chamber. Again, water would be flowing and the metal, the precious metal would fall with gravity to the middle. And so it's a form of metal separating. All that's left of the wooden structure now is this select like, anchor posts into the ground. Laid by C. Pengelly, March 1897. So this is the next building over from the ore crusher. It's a calciner. That's where the fire would have been lit. So the principle is you light the fire, you get the oil really hot and it purifies the metals that you want. The hot air would travel through this tunnel and up into the labyrinth. Bob Acton has given us a lovely illustration of the arsenic condensing chamber. There it is in front of us. He tells us that arsenic was just a byproduct at one stage, but it became quite valuable as a pesticide, especially for the Colorado beetle on the potato plant. It had many other uses as well, including a green colour in Victorian wallpaper, which, when it reacted to the pollution, created arsine gas. And it actually killed people. So there would have been a wall here, wouldn't there? And it just goes up to... It's called a labyrinth. There. So you see leaching out the stone. It's copper sulphate and the brown is, um, well it's iron isn't it? If you've got a better idea of what it might be, let us know in the comments. 
This is rather fun, isn't it? If the arsenic was wanted, the fumes from the calcina were passed through a long zigzag flue known as a labyrinth. It had a tall stack at the end to create a strong through draft and also to reduce the damage caused by the noxious fumes. So that would have had a tunnel shaped roof, wouldn't it? Yeah, a vaulted roof. And the heat would have come through, released the arsenic from the rocks, and it would have just spewed out into the valley. As the gas cooled in the labyrinth, the arsenic condensed and formed crystals on the walls. When sufficient had collected, the calciners were stopped, iron doors in the labyrinth were opened and the arsenic soot was swept off the walls and shoveled out. It was even claimed that arsenic promoted a good complexion and shiny hair. We've shown you the labyrinth, we've shown you the calciner, the ore crushing, the pit and the buddles. We want to go and investigate the stamps and the dressing floors now, see what's left. That's where we've just explored the ore crushing and the buddles. Behind me is a newer version of a bow maiden. A bow maiden used to crush the ore with a lump hammer. They must have been really strong. Some of the most prominent remains at Poldice Mine are the bases for the Californian stamps. These stamps crushed ore bearing rocks into fine sand and the noise would have reverberated all around the valley. Californian stamps were similar to Cornish stamps, but were more rapid in action. They had slowly revolving stamp heads, which both reduced wear and ground more thoroughly. Some of the machinery is still inside. So this valley today, very peaceful, walkers, horse riders, some cyclists, loads of birds, not many plants as we've already said. Imagine 100 and 150 years ago, the noise from ore bashing and fumes from arsenic. I can't even imagine it. Apparently there was up to 50,000 men in this valley working at one time. So where are we now then, Andrew? So we are currently here, looking back towards the arsenic works, and we're just to the side here of what would have been the engine shaft and more mine shafts. So we reckon that that would be the two round circles on the map. Yeah. This is a capped shaft looking down. Not much to see now. So there's another shaft and they fenced that one off. Probably quite deep then. So how did you get up there? How do I get back? Oh, you will do these things, won't you? Just to reassure you, the place is pretty safe. They have capped all the shafts. So you won't just, hopefully, you won't just um, fall down a mine shaft. Years and years ago, when they'd finished with the shaft, they used to put a few timbers down, chuck a bit of ore on top. Then a few years later, when the timber had rotted, well, you can imagine what happened. So all over Cornwall, we used to have instances. I can remember as a child, oh, such and such a shaft has gone down, especially when it had been really wet and rainy. We're gonna try and find one of the pools that would have fed the mine. They obviously needed water to operate things like the buddles. A steep climb. Mm. So of course you'd want the water above your mine workings so that gravity fed the water into your mine workings. Obvious really, isn't it? So here we have another example of a mine shaft which has been capped, like a capping cowling over the top of it there. Have a little look inside. So I'm up on the outer rim now, this mine shaft, and looking down on top of the cowling. You can see it's being capped. They've still got the protective cowling over the top of it. You've got the sea mist rolling inland at the moment as well, it looks quite eerie. So we were earlier down there on the dressing floor of the pole ice mine. And we swing it around, we've got the mine shafts down there and also you've got all the spoils from the mine waste as well. Locally that's called the sands. So who made money out of the mines? Obviously the miners made some money but they were paid in Cornish pennies by the mine owners. The mine owners would accept Cornish pennies in the mine shop. Now of course that meant that the mine owner who owned the shop could set whatever price he wanted for the goods stocked in the shop. Also they ran a pub near the mine Again, taking Cornish pennies. There we go, some trail bikes making best use of the landscape. This is 
is where the trail meets up again. This is the uh, trail from Portree all the way through to Deborah. Known locally as the Sands, mountains of mine waste. If you come back down here, no, you can almost see the layers of silt as it was built up. No, you can, can you? Almost it's Martian, doesn't it? It's a little bit of orange fleck in that. Course, we haven't seen this in action so if our interpretation of the book is slightly wrong and you can help us understand it better please let us know in the comments any information much appreciated really enjoyed my afternoon i love clambering over all those buildings trying to make sense of them buddles arsenic works flues actually felt as if i've learned something today if you're interested at all in cornish mining this is well worth a visit if you find yourself in the area you must come and check it out yes get off your bike and have a wander